In this video, we are going to look at Streamlit and see what is Streamlit. So when you go to their website, you can see they mentions the fastest way to build and share data apps. So Streamlit is a Python library with which you can create custom web apps for machine learning and data science. All right. So we are going to see how we can use this and start using Streamlit. So the first thing that you need to have is uh, on your system, you must have Python 3.6 or higher installed along with pip. All right. So when these two things are on your system, you can install Streamlit and you can directly start working with it. So you can open your command prompt. So I'm using Anaconda environment. So I'll be using this command prompt. Uh, let's do one thing so the command to install streamlet is pip install streamlet so when you enter this command uh, it is going to install streamlet on your system so it's installing so actually I already have Streamlit installed. That's why it says requirement already satisfied, satisfied. But on your system, uh, it will be installing for the first time. All right. So once your once Streamlit is installed on your system, what you need to enter is Streamlit. Hello. Press enter. So now it says, uh, welcome to Streamlit, check out our demo in browser. So it has opened the default um, browser and you see, you can see welcome to Streamlit. So if you get this uh, as the output, then Streamlit is installed properly on your system. All right. And as you can see, it runs on localhost port number 8501. If you think about it clearly now, uh, you can see that we did not install any external server servers to run this program we just typed streamlit hello and then you get this so this is the default app that streamlit has created for you so if you go on the left you see you know, animation demo you can you click on this you get this animation and then they have provided some sliders for you which you can change all right okay so what i'll do now is i'm going to stop this server and close this and what we are going to do now is we are going to create a new python file so i'm using spider you can use uh, any editor of your choice so create a file demo.py and Great. So I've created a demo.py file and now what you need to do is you need to import streamlet that you have installed right now. Now that you have imported streamlet, now we can see some of the functions that streamlet provides us with. So I'm going to show you a few and then you can go and explore more. All right. So the first one that I want to show is show you is sv.title. Right. and let's see give us some title a train stream a demo okay. save this file now i have to run this file all right so let's go to our command from now and go to the directory where we have saved the demo dot demo dot pi file and you to run the file you need to put the command streamlet run and the name of the file all right so enter so it's running and it will open up the browser and you can see hacker shine stream the demo all right so if you see properly you are not writing any front-end code here you have the you have directly said st.title and that has created this title so if so you can say that in HTML, this is the H1 or the H2 tag. All right. So if, 
so you are not installing any external servers uh, to run your app on localhost you are not writing any front end code uh, you are directly using streamlit and the functions provided by streamlit so whenever you are working on a machine learning project you can directly uh, share the outputs graphs and everything that is related to the project on directly on the app on the web app so you don't have to write the front end code separately and then integrate that with your python on the machine learning uh, python code so this becomes very very easy all right so i'll show you a couple of more functions so we have st header let's say this is a header and then we have st dot subheader as well let's better then we have st dot text this is some text right. save this and when we when you go back to your browser so it says source file changed rerun and always rerun so click on always rerun and you get this this is a subheaders header and some text all right so this is the html part rendered by streamlit for you when you run these functions right. so i'll show you a couple of more uh, things in streamlit some simple things that you will use often so we have so let's say we want to display an image all right rest. so you say st dot image and you can uh, give the path to that image so i could say so in this particular folder i have tom.jpg let's save this let's go and see so as you can see i've got an image of tom but as you can see it is not completely uh you know on on the page it is it is half only so what we have here is another parameter that you have to use it is use column width right? and you have to set this to true control save and then go back and as you can see it has now fit uh, in this particular column and along with that you can expand this all right so this is for image so let's say you have a video so you can say st.video and then the path to that video video all right and we'll save and then you go back and you have a video running all right so so this is you are writing a single line of code all right so in images you could now let's say you want the uh, user to choose the image for you so what you can say is file dot file uploader a function by given by streamlet and then you can say choose a file okay and uh, let's see what happens when we run this okay, so as you can see you have got a, a window to drag and drop your files here or browse files a button and the uh, message that you want to uh, tell the user you can mention it here all right so choose a file it says here okay so what happens when the user chooses a file so we'll tell this now we'll write that now so if file is not none then what should happen so uh, right now i'm going to tell the user to choose uh choose an image and i'm going to display that image so i say this so before this before displaying what you need to do is you need to read the image right so i'll say img equal to the file that the user has chosen dot read right? save this and once the image is read now you can say st dot image as the image and then say use underscore column underscore width 
equal to true. So let's see if this works or not. Refresh once. You have everything and browse files. I'll click on this and let's say uh, China and let's display some image that I already have so I'll choose this so you get this image right so it is displaying so so the, it, it has found the file it is reading the file and then it is displaying the image so you can do this with anything so if you have a data set then you can use a data set and then you can load the data set and then display that data set so if you have a video that the user wants to choose you can give uh, you can upload a video also you let the user choose a video and then you can upload that video all right and then what else we can see then okay we can see buttons so uh, I need to have some functionality on a button. So I can say if e dot button place solar on that button to take click me and inside the if I'll say st dot text the button clicked right. Let's go back to our app refresh it says click me when I click on this it says the button was clicked so you can give this button some different functionalities like uh, when the button is clicked uh, you can run some uh, code that you want and then you can display the output of that code here right? I'll show you some examples that uh, I've already made using streamlit so the next thing that I'll show you is the slider. So at the start, uh, when you uh, ran Streamlit Hello, you saw a slider on the left, right? So you can see that also. So you simply say, let's say SL equal to ST dot slider. And let's uh, name this um, maybe height. Let's say, let's say value. All right, nothing else. And go back and refresh. And we have a slider. So it starts from zero and ends with hundred. So these are the default values given. And you can change this, right? So if I want to set my own values, then you have min underscore value and max underscore value that you have to enter. So now it's starting with 50 and end, uh, ending on 100. So you can set the maximum value also, and the slider works. So the value of this slider you can give it to some another function or any other parameter, and you can then you can manipulate manipulate that part. All right. So this is one. This, this is some of the. Uh, some small part of streamlet that I wanted to show in you in this video so now what I'll do is I'll show you a couple of things that I've already made and deployed on streamlet so as I said the data visualization I had done on food demand forecasting and I have also done image processing using streamlet so as you can see this is the image that I have uploaded so if you go to image processing you can see the slider and uh, the image you can plot graphs so in data visualization also I have plotted some graph so uh, if you go to their documentation you can uh, find many 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 different things on streamlit and how you can use streamlit with your machine learning and data science part all right so I've uh, made two videos also on uh, data visualization and uh, image processing, uh, processing as well I'll enter, I'll put the links to those in the description below and you can watch them. You can understand how I've uh, made this, made these uh, streamlit apps. As you can see, the slider has changed and the value is also, the image also is changing. All right. I have the code for this particular 
uh, image processing and data visual visualization on my github you can go through it understand it and uh, you can explore more on stream it so that's it for this video uh, if you like content then you can please like share and subscribe that's it thank you